gravel is just everywhere at Euro Bike at the moment. It's gravel. So many brands have bought gravel bikes, a gravel tech, there's a gravel saddle, and all the kit that you need for adventure. Now, you can't talk about gravel bikes without mentioning these guys, Surly. They pretty much invented the gravel bike, it's fair to say, and this one is their latest. It's called the Midnight Special. It came out earlier in the year, and on our gravel spectrum, it kind of falls more towards the road end, certainly in terms of the products that they offer. Now, as you can see, it's based around 650B wheels. These ones are shod with nice 47 millimeter wide tires, but actually, it'll fit up to 60 millimeter wide tires. That's flipping enormous. Now, this category is kind of loosely been termed Road Plus, but with those tyres on, Surly are calling it Road Plush, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, now, it's spaced around a chromoly frame, 4130, and you can see that the position is definitely at the relaxed end of the spectrum when it comes to road. It's covered in bosses to fit all kinds of racks and luggage on there. So I think that's fair to say that is a bike built for adventure. I'm on the Shimano stand, and Shimano's components brand Pro has also come to the bike packing party with a new range of bags. So firstly, there's a seat post bag that has 15 litre capacity. There's a handlebar bag, which has eight litres. And then there's also a frame bag and a top tube bag as well, which is 0.75 litres and 5.5 litres. So there's a number of cool little features on these bags that I want to draw your attention to. Firstly, on the seat post bag, there's these nice rubber blocks, these sponge blocks. And what these do is help protect your seat post or your frame from scratching. And they also help stop the bag, we're told by Shimano, moving around laterally and swinging around, securing it better than most other bags on the market. All the bags are made from a waterproof fabric to help protect your belongings in particularly bad weather. And those same rubber blocks are also found on the bar bag as well. So what this means is, in addition to help protecting your frame, your, your handlebars from getting scratched, it also means you've got a bit of a gap there so that you can actually get your hands on the tops around the bar as well. Now here is a cool little bit of budget tech from Topeak that I really like. It's called the Tubi Booster, and it's basically, it's a bit like a homemade CO2 air canister, except it's not just CO2, it's normal air. So what you use it for is to help to inflate pesky tubeless tires that might struggle to seat. So most of them kind of are okay now, but every now and then you'll get one rim and tire combination that really doesn't want to go up. And so you need to use something a little bit more powerful than a standard floor pump. And so with this, you use your standard floor pump to put loads of pressure inside, 160 PSI, and then it's got basically a normal CO2 canister type fixing on there. So you screw it onto the valve, and then, hey presto, you've got 160 PSI going straight into your tire. Genius. This absolutely beautiful bike has just caught my eye. So it is a Viello V plus one. Now you probably haven't heard of Viello because they're quite a small boutique indie brand from the UK. But the V plus one is designed to be an all encompassing sort of very versatile adventure bike, but is equally capable on road as off road. So here we've got it fitted with the seriously bling Zip 303 Firecrest 650B wheels, which are a smaller diameter than a 700C wheel. Now the main advantage with this is that you can fit much bigger tires with much greater air volume. So it can take up to 40 millimeter tires if you want, making it really capable off-road. And there's also a lot of compliance built into the frame as well. So you can see these really nice thin seat stays are designed to flex and also the uh, chain stays are slightly flared as well. But if you want the versatility to be able to go and ride with your mates in a group ride and not get dropped, then you can also fit a standard 700C wheel with a slightly skinnier tire as well. Now, another cool feature about the Viello is that it's a one by specific frame. So here you can see we've got the SRAM Force uh, one by chain set fitted, and this is a really nice one because it's the Quark D0 model. And also, there's loads of other great features. So, to make it an incredibly practical and versatile bike, you've got hidden mudguard mounts, or fender mounts if you're American, uh, and they're front and rear, but also bolts so that you can attach lunch boxes and luggage if you want to go on a bikepacking adventure. There's also, yeah, some hidden bolts underneath here as well for a toolbox. 
Just a really neat, neat and tidy, very smart, but very practical bike. I really like it. Love the colour as well. Catherine had a look at these over at the Dirty Kanza, but I haven't yet, and I really want to get my hands on them. So here we go. These are the new Envy gravel-specific wheels. This is the G23, which is the 700C version with 23mm internal rim width. And then this, conveniently labelled the G27, because it's a 27.5 wheel, but so labelled because it's got 27mm internal rim width. So this is for, for really plump tyres, like 42mm up to 2.25 inches, if you don't mind me swapping uh, my measuring systems there. And this one is for 35mm up to 45mm wide tyres. And I can't quite tell you just how light these things are. Bonkers. This is 330 grams for the rim. This one just 320 grams. And the other notable bit is the tech that's migrated over from mountain biking. Uh, it's not the first NV uh, drop bar specific wheel to have it but the bead there the bead hook is hookless okay so you run them at lower pressures obviously because they're bigger tires but it helps it seat much much quicker Selly San Marco are a brand with an undeniably huge amount of heritage when it comes to cycling having brought out their first saddle in 1935 so brace yourselves we're going to go on a really quick journey through time and saddle space starting with this, this is one of their first Conquer designs. Look at that, that's absolutely crazy. And the Conquer has gone through a few changes. This is the, the 1994 model. And uh, it's actually, look at that. <laughs> and it's still available today actually, which is really awesome. It's just an enduring classic design. But they've got some new stuff as well, including a brand new logo. But the most exciting thing I've seen is this GND saddle, which has just come out. Now this is a saddle that's been specifically designed for off-road applications, including gravel riding or adventure riding. Now in order to make it better for that kind of application, it's actually designed to support you better in a slightly more upright position rather than a full-on road position. And so it's a little bit wider and gives really good seat bone support here. But also, my favorite part is that it's got shock absorption built into it and this really awesome core zone here you can see which is just really squidgy and just it just feels great i just really want to sit on it for some bike packers slash adventurers only the absolute most bomb proof kit will do and so if that is you take a look at this so this is the first drop bar shifter system for pinion gearboxes so pinion gearboxes are like like an adventurer's wet dream. They're, they're bomb proof, basically. Maintenance free in combination with a Gates carbon belt drive. So you don't need to touch it for 10,000 kilometers. But you've always had to use a flat handlebar because they haven't had a shifter. But now, Sync have been authorized to create the first ever drop bar shifters in collaboration with TRP. So you've got your TRP hydraulic brakes and then you've got your Sync shifters up here. And basically, the way Pinion works is that you have like one cable to push and one cable to pull and then in this case you end up with basically like mechanical e-tap so one hand shifts up and one hand shifts down now then have a look at this do not be deceived this is not a mountain bike creeping onto gcn because look it's got drop handlebars as well this is the brand new moots baxter and it's another of these bikes that's kind of genre bending so it's like a 29er mountain bike monster cross gravel adventure bike with drop handlebars so whatever that is anyway it looks like a huge amount of fun that's 100 mil suspension fork up front we've obviously got those flared drop handlebars as well and then in terms of the position on this bike so it's a little bit shorter than a mountain bike so that's obviously then you can run those drop handlebars which put you a little bit further forward and then it's also a little bit shorter in the head tube as well you'll notice that the saddle is bizarrely low and that's because it's got a dropper post oh yeah this one is all about fun and it's very coolly connected to hey, your uh, left hand shifter there which obviously because it's running one by you don't need it to shift so you can try your dropper post Anyone who is in to cycle touring or adventure cycling will no doubt be familiar with the brand Ortlieb. They have been around a long time. Their first panniers, in fact, came out in 1981 after, I was told, the founder was cycle touring around England 
and was fed up not only with being wet himself, but about having completely wet luggage as well. And so waterproof has always been synonymous with Ortlieb. But they have always concentrated on panniers until very recently when they brought out their bike packing range. And here at Eurobike, there are one or two new pieces as well, like the frame bag and the top tube bag here as well. Now, I'm told that they are waterproof. This one is waterproof to a depth of one and a half meters for half an hour. And that's because this zip is super duper waterproof and all the seams have been welded as well. Also, I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, clearly whoever's bike this is, they're, they're a proper bike packer. They've graduated. To peek with the bags that I used when I went on my Morocco bike packing adventure, and I couldn't help but notice they brought out some new ones called the Versa Cage. So this is like a plastic frame that very simply and quickly attaches to your front forks, and then you can basically put whatever you want in it. So in this one, you can see they've got their bike camper, bike specific tent that actually uses your bike as a tent pole. Uh, but you could put water in there, whatever, and very quickly and effectively boost the storage capacity of your bike with no extra amounts needed. Look who I've just bumped into it is Josh Ibert, our bike packing guru. Uh, Josh, have you recovered from Morocco yet? Yeah, it was pretty tough that one, wasn't it? It's just about, yeah. I mean, it got half wheeled for three days, so it's pretty tough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, unsurprisingly, perhaps, Josh has cycled to Friedrichshafen in Germany. In terms of accommodation, was it that hedge around the back of the show? No, I thought I'd go for luxury here because I'm on a business trip, so I went for a bus stop. Bus stop, nice. Uh, now, now, in all seriousness, bikepacking is taking over Eurobike, isn't it? Everywhere you look, there is something kind of bikepacking or adventure related. How does that feel for you? Well, it's great. It shows that the, the kind of uh, the type of riding I do, that, that I enjoy, that a lot of other people enjoy, is becoming mainstream. Um, it shows that it's getting more popular. I mean, big brands like Shimano are bringing out their own kind of bike packing ranges. Yeah. Um, and that's just really great. It just it just sort of validifies what we do. Yeah. Now, when certain brands get into kind of bike packing stuff. Like they obviously don't have the immediate credibility, but in terms of whether the products are up to scratch, like is it is it hard to get like your bags right? Are the things that you know the established bike packers know that maybe newbies don't, like myself? I think a lot of the smaller brands who who, who have been started by riders quite often have the edge over the bigger companies because obviously they're out there riding every single day. I mean, you learned a lot in Morocco, didn't you? About I did, what yeah. works and what doesn't. Yeah. So I think I think often the um, the smaller companies do have that edge, but the benefit of the larger companies is that they can bring the price point down. So if you're just thinking about getting into it and you don't really know what you need yet, it's a great opportunity to to, to lower the, the sort of the barriers to entry and just give it a go. Give, give it a go. There's no excuses not to. Bring. Yeah. Now, what are you doing here, if I may ask? Um, well, I'm trying to start my own event, uh, my own bikepacking race. Um, so I'm looking at doing something towards the end of next year, um, of around a thousand miles, uh, somewhere in Europe. And yeah, I'm trying to get it up and going off the ground. So if you want to race next year, let me know. A thousand miles, you said? Yeah, just a short one. Might, might start training. Quite frankly, if you don't want to go on an adventure after seeing all that, then I don't know what it's going to take. Yeah, absolutely. Right. If you want to watch another video from here at Eurobike, the cycling world's biggest trade show, then why not click on screen now?